Okay, so from what we did in our last lesson, let's talk about the patterns. The patterns in expanding, there's always one more number of terms. The exponent of the first term starts at n and goes down to 0, whereas the exponent of the second term starts at 0 and builds up to n. Okay, so let's look at an example here that we did last time. This was the expansion of x plus y cubed. And let's just review the different patterns here. So the exponent on the outside that I'm raising it to, for my coefficients, I'm going to start with 3's. So 3 c's all the way down. I start at 0 and I build up to 3. So 3 c 0, 3 c 1, 3 c 2, 3 c 3. Okay. Another pattern is when I start at 0, that's also the value of the exponent in my second term. So see 0 and 0. 1 and 1, 2 and 2, 3 and 3. Another pattern is to figure out my exponent of my first term. Look at 3 take away 0 is 3. 3 take away 1 is 2. 3 take away 2 is 1. 3 take away 3 is 0. So if I want to expand this, the nth term in general can be found using this expression here. And let's just look at the pattern that works here. So the value of n is what I start with for my combinations. They're all nc's, okay? The value of k is the exponent of the second term, just like I saw there. The value of the second term is n minus k, n minus k. So we're going to put all of this together so my tip here for you is that k is the exponent of term number 2, whereas n minus k is the exponent of the first term. So let's look at patterns with this n and the term number and k, because we're trying to build to a general term. So patterns with n and the term number with k. So patterns with n, n is 0, I start with zero c's. n is one, I start with one c. n is two, this whole row is two c's. Start with three, it's three c's all the way across. So this is the pattern with n. Always starting that way. The pattern with k, let's look at this. Term one, I have a k value of zero. Term two, I have a k value of one. Term three, my k value is two. Do you see what's happening here? 4 is 3, 5 is 4, 6 is 5, 7 is 6. This is always 1 less. So the term number 1 less is your k value. So that's my tip for you here, is that k is always 1 less than the term number. So always 1 less than the term number. So some notes about k's. Rows can have a first term, like each one of those rows has a first term. They don't have a zeroth term. So if k is the exponent of the second variable, now that value can be zero. The second exponent can have a value of zero, but you can't have a zeroth term. So what that means is that t sub k can't be the general term. So the general term must be t sub k plus 1. So that when k equals 0, 0 plus 1 is the first term. So putting that all together with what we did before, the, f the first term, t sub k plus 1, is going to be nck, k, and then x to the n minus k, y to the k. So the same pattern that we did before. So the nth term is t sub k plus 1, not t sub k. So let's put that together. I want to find specific terms now. So I want to find the seventh term of the expansion 2x minus 3y to the exponent of 10. I want to do this without actually expanding it. So if I'm looking for the seventh term, remember k is always going to be one less than that. It's going to be 6. If I look at my exponent of 10, that tells me that's my n value. Your first term here, 2x, is your x value. Your second term, negative 3y, is your second term. So x equals 2x, y equals negative 3y. Let's put this all together in the general form. So t sub 6 plus 1 equals 10c6, first term which is 2x, to the 10 minus 6, 
times second term negative 3y to the k value of 6. Okay, so tidying this all up, 6 plus 1, this is in fact the seventh term. So it's going to be 10c6 times 2 to the 10 minus 6 is 4, and that will be x to the 4 as well. And then negative 3 to the exponent of 6 times y to the exponent of 6. So I'm just really trying to separate out what the coefficients are. So 10c6 times 2 exponent 4 times negative 3 exponent 6, that will give me my coefficient. So I just plug that into my calculator, and that's my coefficient. So I'm going to have, let's see, what is this? 2,449,450. That's my coefficient. So my seventh term is going to be that, x exponent 4, y exponent 6. Okay? So that would be my seventh term altogether without actually expanding it. Okay, let's try another one. In this one here, I want to find the middle term. So they're not telling you what term number it is, but they're telling you it's a middle term. Well, let's start here. If the exponent is 10, that means 10 plus 1, there are 11 terms. So if I start writing out 11 terms, that's going to be 5 on the left, 5 on the right, which means the middle term is 6. So let's put down what we know. Our exponent, 10, is my n value. x is my first term, 4a y is my second term which is d and k is well if i'm dealing with t sub six that's my middle term is six k is one less than that which is five so let's put this all together so i have t sub five plus one equals 10 c five times my first term 4a to the n minus k so 10 minus five is five times my second term, which is d, to the value of k, which is 5. So this is my sixth term is, now let's just write this out so we can keep our coefficients together. So 10c5 times 4 to the 5, a exponent 5, d exponent 5 as well. Okay, so putting that into the calculator, I can come up with what my coefficient is. So 10c5 times 4 exponent 5 is 258,048. So that means that my sixth term is that coefficient times a exponent 5, d exponent 5. That would be my sixth term or my middle term. Okay, let's try another one here. When expanding ax plus y to the exponent of 8, where a is a positive value greater than 0, one of the terms is 112x squared y exponent 6. What is the value of a? So I always want to start out with what I know and kind of work backwards to figure out what I don't know. So n, the exponent is 8. x, my first term is ax. y, my second term is y. k, I don't know yet. So let's put this in. This time we're given our general term, 112 x exponent 2 y exponent 6 equals, so 8 c k, my first term, a x to the n minus k times y to the k. So looking at this, I have different variables. I have an x and I have a y. In my answer, I have an x and I have a y. So just looking at my y values, I need y exponent 6. I have y exponent k. So right there, I'm hoping you see that. That tells me that the value of k is actually 6. That's the only way that this can be true. So let's tighten this up a little bit. It's 112x squared y exponent 6 equals 8c6, ax to the 8 take away 6 is 2, and then y squared. Or sorry, y to the k, k is not 2, k is 6. So let's plug that in. Okay, so we're trying to get at what the value of a is. So I have 112x squared y exponent 6 equals 8c6, a squared, x squared, 
y exponent 6. So I see I have an x squared and a y exponent 6 on both sides, so those are really gone. So I'm left with 112 equals 8c6 times a squared. So if I were to take um, and divide 8c6 from both sides, I would get what a squared is. So 112 divided by 8c6 is going to give me what a squared is. So that tells me that 4 equals a squared. Take the square root of both sides and a is equal to plus and minus 2. But in the original equation, or original question, they said that a was a positive value. So I know there's only one answer and that is positive 2. Okay, so in another example, the last example I want to look at, I want to find what term number is the constant term and what is the constant term. So if I'm asking you when you expand this what the constant term is, a constant term is a variable to the exponent of zero. In other words, there's no variable. So I want to find out what term number has a variable to the exponent of zero. So similar to this one here, I was trying to find out what term had this specific 112x squared y exponent six, but this time I'm just looking at which one has a variable with an exponent of zero. Let's plug in again everything I know. So I know my n value is my exponent, which is 12. x is my first term, which is x cubed. y is my second term, three over x. I'm going to write that as 3 times x to the negative 1. So I'm going to write it with a negative exponent. And I don't know the value of k. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in what I have here. So I have t sub k plus 1 equals nck, first term, x cubed to the n, which is 12, minus k. and 3x to the negative 1 will be raised to the k value, which I don't know. Okay, so I know, I don't know what my value of k is, but I know that my general term is going to have an x to the exponent of 0. So that's going to be 12ck times x, and let's do the power law here, 3 times 12 minus 3k, and then it will be 3k and then x to the negative k, just distributing that in there. So in this question here, my tip can it, is going to be just focus on the variables to solve for k. So I just want to focus on the variables to solve for k. I don't need the coefficients here to solve. I'm just going to focus on uh, the k values. So I'm going to focus on x to the 0 equals x to the, let's do the distributive property again, 36 minus 3k, and then x to the negative k. So this is product law. So I'm going to keep my base and add my exponents, 36 minus 4k. Since I have the same base on both sides, I'm going to make like a wedding DJ and drop the base and make my exponents equal. And again, I'm just doing this to find my value of k. So add 4k to both sides, divide both sides by 4. So I get my k value is 9. Ah, now that I have my k value is 9, this question is a lot easier to do, okay? So I had to find out what my value of k was before I could figure out what my constant was. So now that I know my value of k, I can just plug it all into the question. So t sub 9 plus 1 equals... 12c9 multiplied by x cubed to the n minus k, so 12 minus 9, times my second term, which is 3x to the negative 1, and that will be raised to the exponent of 9. So I now know that my constant value is the 10th term. So I have 12c9 times x to the 9, 3 to the exponent of 9, x to the negative 9. Okay, so what I can see right now is I can see that x to the 9 and x to the negative 9, when I multiply those together, I add the exponents, 9 take away 9 is 0. So I have an x to the 0. 
So my 10th term can be found by, we're going to put this into our calculator and just multiply it through. So 12C9 times 3 to the exponent of 9, this is going to tell me what my constant term is. So my constant term is going to be 4,330,260. And that's my constant without an x value, an x exponent uh, of 0, because 9 take away 9 is 0. Okay, so you've seen a couple of examples applying uh, the general term of a binomial theorem to find specific terms, middle terms, or constant, what the constant is, in other words, x to the exponent of 0. So to summarize, the general term is not t sub k, it's t sub k plus 1. k always 1 less than the term number. And this general term will be given to you on your formula sheet. So the general term is nck x to the n minus k and y to the k, where x is the first term, y is the second term. So when you're given a specific term, like we did with that constant value or that when we were solving for a we were given a specific term that's really the t sub k plus one the last or the general term so in the last lesson we learned about pascal triangle but how about pascat's triangle maybe that can catch on